I have analyzed the metadata about um, paintings in museums. Um, in Wigan's lecture on Van Gogh, he talks about how Van Gogh produced all of his works within a brief period at the end of his life. He can see a graph that records um, points in his life when he made those pictures. He can see some other famous artists when they created pictures. Picasso created works when he was young, uh, but then continued throughout his life. Cezanne created works sporadically. Uh, this information comes from a data set that has up to uh, 12,000 records and it's from a combined metadata from the Met Museum and the MoMA Museum in New York as well as the Tate Museum in London. I'm not affiliated with this, uh, these museums. I was interested to see when painters created their works relative to their lives uh, and here's a, a graph uh, that shows that they produced mostly of their work when they were in their midlife or to their later life. It doesn't change in the 20th and 21st century. Most art is coming from artists in their mid to later life periods. And here you can see those famous painters again, and you can see how old they were when they created their works. Van Gogh produced all of his works within 10 years, while the others created a, on a greater spectrum. And here are artists from across the data set. It seems that um, work comes a lot from when they were 30, and it keeps being collected until when they're 60 and when they're 50. And it just shows that there's a lot of hope for up and coming artists that are still in their youth and haven't found success because it seems that success comes with maturity. Here we can see the lifespan of an artist compared with the life expectancy of that time. Life expectancy is affected by infant mortality, uh, but you can still see that most artists are generally healthier than the general populace of that time. Here you can see the number of paintings and artists from different years. Uh, you can also see artists' gender, and you can see that women were rarely recognized as painters until recent centuries. You can also see that museums have, are really interested in the 1950s in terms of modern art, and you can also see that in the 90s and the 2000s, that the gap between uh, women and men in terms of painting is reducing. Here you can see comparisons between the dimension of paintings and the pigment used for different centuries. You can see that um, in the 1800s and 1700s, oil was very dominant, but there's some interesting examples like crayon. Uh, then in the 1900s, you can see some more exciting stuff. There are a lot more materials being used like acrylics and the pictures are growing in size to two meters in dimension. Um, more recently, in the 2000s, you can see an explosion of preference for large-scale pictures, with dimensions of 4 meters as an average. Um, Vietnam 2 is an outlying example of a large format picture. It has a width of 11 meters. Here is a graph that compares the picture dimensions for works by male and female artists. It seems that women used to work in small formats, but if you look at the female dots to the right, at the very right, women are beginning to work in much larger formats. Uh, to summarize, you can see that successful painting work comes later in life and that the gallery scene is very interested in large format pictures.